um, because a lot of work since we always lecture here. And also need to do another thing, juggling. So anyway, um, continuing from yesterday. So yesterday, uh, to recap, we already covered the discussion on the research paradigm. Um, what is the potential approach that can be used with qualitative data? And the final part, we discussed about um, some example on data collection techniques such as interview, observation, and also uh, focus group discussion. So, um, continuing with those information that I have shared yesterday, um, today we will focus, I will share or discuss with you related to how we're going to, how can we analyze the data. So yesterday we discussed about the data collection, today so we will focus on the data analysis and how to discuss, how, how to put it in writing and how to actually presenting the finding and to ensure the credibility of research finding. So, um, uh, so, although this slide show that um, how to analyze an interview, actually um, the, the technique that I'm going to use or share is a technique that, that can be used to analyze any qualitative data. Okay. So, if you miss some of the sharing yesterday and also you want to have a recap on today, uh, on this particular technique, you can also um, get information or see the recording at the U my YouTube channel, uh, Dr. Siti Uzaria, my YouTube channel. So I have um, lots of like um, almost few hundred collection of video related to research work. Um, so the analysis technique that um, in general, basic requirement or minimum requirement that you can use to analyze any qualitative data is called content analysis. Uh, sometimes people call it as thematic analysis, but uh, um, most of the book that I've read through, um, the title of the book or the, the technique that they have highlighted is content analysis instead of thematic analysis. But um, yesterday, as we discussed, maybe in grounded theory approach, they have one, uh, they have ways, a uh, specific ways to analyze the data. So one of the uh, procedures in um, analyzing data, they have thematic coding, thematic coding. So maybe. Um, um, different different approach do have different ways of analysis. Um, in particular, grounded theory because um, grounded theory the significance of doing the grounded theory approach is you need to really show how the analysis process is critically critically done um, according to it. There are steps of grounded theory. There are few steps. So before um, before the information can be grounded as theory. So other than that, um, you can use at least or the basic understanding on how we can analyze the, any qualitative data, we can use content analysis technique. Um, so in order to use content analysis technique, it is one main rule. So any information, any info, it's not any information, any raw data that you collected on the ground must be transformed into a written text or document. So it is, where is the book? It's not from me. I, I'm taking this from um, definition by um, a few authors. Okay, I think I, I put this reference at the end of the slide. Um, so the rules is all data that you have collected need to be transformed into a written document, into text or written document. Then only you can analyze the content. So if you have interview as your data collection, therefore you need to transcribe it by have to transcribe the discussion or conversation and put it into a transcript, full transcript 
a uh, word by word breakdown you must not summarize must not conclude it, must not list the point only it's basically taking all the conversation on the paper it's like um, the clerk in the courtroom or the clerk in the parliament they put everything down so if you have focus group discussion the discussion must also be jotting down on a paper as a proof of raw data so this consider as written text of or document if you do observation also all the jotting down and more memoing need to put on the paper in written so if you uh, that, that is why uh, it is advisable to record your conversation your interview session your focus group discussion so therefore um, you can play it back to hear it and write it down word by word and you can actually um apa nama uh, upah lah pay other people to do the transcribe for you to do the transcribing process for you so um then on the, you will look into the content in order to analyze it so um in order to do the content analysis you make sure it need to be put in a written text or document um so what then only we look at the content to analyze in order to look at the emerging pattern that might uh, occur from the raw data so this is the basis of content analysis <clears throat> so what can be analyzed any types of qualitative data that you cannot put formula on it you cannot calculate it um, it is very subjective like interview transcript field note observation picture audio video um, lots of document piles of document or archive when i say document um, um you must be able to differentiate whether the document is for your literature review or the document is for your data but usually the the a published document usually we will we'll put it as reference for our literature review section and unpublished documents such as uh, minute of meeting, site visit, or any organization or company um, document that's not published to the public, not published or have open access to the public, um, will can be considered as the data. So we'll have those documents as to review those documents. We call it as document review um, analysis, okay? Uh, document review data collection so we can analyze the content. So it depends. Um, like I said, um, observation and also focus group discussion can be quantitative or qualitative. Um, as long uh, I think you got the um, to capture the the basic understanding on if if um, the way that you conduct the observation or focus group discussion is for you to count something to rank the order or to get um, opinion based on checklist just tick 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 so that will be quantification that will be totally quantitative however on the other part or the other hand if the observation is more is is in a subjective manner we when you jotting down and memoing things based on the checklist that you have provided as guide so that will be um uh, qualitative data um what else um you can also have a series of um video recorded um situation or scenario situation or phenomena that you um recorded with video and then you observe it without you know conversation so you need to explain or describe what you can see from the video so all this um the thing the, the the technique that i'm showing you is a manual technique so if you want to do it manual you can do it manually but if you have less than three or less than five you can it is still possible and you will not face any headache in doing it manually but if you have more than to me if you have more than five if you 
at least if you have more than three, it is better for you to get any qualitative software to help you manage with the data management, data analysis, data presenting of your analysis is much more better and less headache, less messy with the help of any software in qualitative, I will go into that later. So this is um, a type of um, data that can be analyzed with content analysis. Dengan syarat, with the rules that you need to translate or transform the data into a written text or document. So um, analysis of the any written data or we can see as interview as well is actually exploration. We are going to look at the content to record the raw data to find an emerging theme like um, the important idea that occur that you can pick up. Okay, so usually when it's not as easy as you look at it and you can get um, apa nama quickly can can grab the information. It doesn't work that way. Usually, it took few time, like two or three times. And the first, what the first um, steps. It's not the first step. The first time, the first wave when we look at our data usually. Kenapa dia tertukar-tukar <laughs> jadi muka you pula, Linda? I don't know why. Um, so the first steps, uh, the first time you look at your data, you might find something that um, initial, initial idea. Um, Linda. <coughs> okay, Linda. Boleh, boleh, boleh. 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 Saya share balik. I don't know what happened. Saya tekan kot. Tak ada saya nak tekan apa-apa. Tekan apa-apa juga. So we shall wait for the uploading the slide. Okay, I'll take control, eh, Linda. Okay, okay. Dia tak, dia, dia macam hang. Dia tak apalah, dia keluar juga. Okay, so, um, so we want to look at how participant responded and feels or think about the things that we investigate or the things that we ask them. So um, this content analysis process or process can be used together. It's not can use together. It the content analysis can be done through two ways, either word base or code base. Okay, word base or code base. So what is word base? If you are looking at a particular word inside your transcript, so you are looking for the word trauma, for example, you're going to look at a particular word called bribe. So trauma, bribe, pain. Uh, so if you are looking at a particular word, so it means you are analyzing the contents with word-based approach. Um, if you look at the, the, the data and you identify certain quotation, or we call it as coding process, eh? like you highlighting the statement from your participants, you highlighting some statement, and this statement uh, represents some idea, so it is called code-based approach. Okay, so what is the difference? Usually, uh, some scholars said if it's word based, that means you quantify the word. So you are actually, although you are a qualitative researcher, so however, when you quantify, it's not however, lah, you're still qualitative researcher. When you quantify, it's called quantitative content analysis. Anyway, um, either code based or word based, actually, we, we actually quantify the information by looking at the high percentage because for example if you have 10 participants so how many how many is um, reliable or a good 
a strong information that we can conclude as our result, initial result. So we will look into that later. So I just explain about this first. So word base is when you look at a particular word, code base, if you look at any sentence that represents some ideas, so it is code base. And all this, and these two approach can be also, this, this process is called we knowing, like um, uh, the closest, the closest um, word we know, we knowing maybe to make you understand it will be like like it looks like filtering but it's it's not like filtering filtering is you put it and it comes comes out we knowing is like you you know uh, menampi padi atau mendulang emas you know um, some comes out and some you're not sure some some come out some stay remain so that is why when we look at our transcript or our data for the first time, we got very broad idea of the important um, information that we find out from the data. So we pick up and then we look again and it's like you try to saturate it. So it's called the winnowing process. So second time we look back, oh, these are the main. So the first time usually I call it like um, free flow idea, initial coding. So when you look back at the second phase, you think, okay, so now I start to understand this might belong to the uh, challenges, this might belong to advantages. So we try to group it into a generic, generic um, teams or a generic, generic group. And finally, maybe after two or three time we knowing process have took place, you finally um, um, establish a teams or category um, to reflect your finding, your 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 final result, your final your finding lah. Okay, yeah? so that is um, why it need to be undergo this renewing process because um, it took time to really eh, macam macam nak cari mutiara lah atau nak gilap emas. It took time to really uh, find uh, the the important information from the data okay so okay sorry so those two approach can be in order for us to explain how the winnowing process took place you using those two approach code base or word base you can have it with other several analytical strategies such as display data, identify codes, reduce information, count frequency of code, relating categories. There are so many other strategies, but I, um, to me, this um, I like these five better because um, I have put in my books, it's ad adapted from Caswell, but I add more, add more authors um, because I think these five strategies is much more frequently used uh, by researcher can be used by researcher when the way knowing process took place. So um, from the uh, from scholars or any authors researcher in qualitative display data means whatever you put it you display your data either in table either in graph either in matrix either in diagram whatever is called data display. Um, let me just um, start with, okay, actually it start with reduced information. So from the vast amount of data from the original transcript that you have, you, you do the winnowing process, you sorting every time. So it is actually reduced information. And then um, from that, when you do the winnowing process, you identify the, the statement that represents something so that is identify codes you look at how many people so if for example you have 10 people whatever more than five or five is considered as dominant we do not actually take number as our final deliberation on this is important but it's Number is to reflect the dominant, the high percentage, but we we don't really say like 70%, 80%. In in a good way, in, in a good way, in a, in an ideal way on reporting qualitative data analysis, we call it as a dominant pattern that emerge. Okay, dominant. So what consider as dominant, of course, lah, whatever is more than five. 
whatever more than 50% is dominant. So let's say if 10, so you have more than 5 or 5 above, that will be a dominant. So you count, actually you count. But if you have seven people say 70%, 9 over 10, nothing wrong with that. But however, sometimes when people read your uh, write-up or panel read the write-up, if they, they do not clear, not properly understood um, the intention of qualitative data, they might miss Secondly, um, um, evaluate it as so. Oh, okay. I can see that you count. So why not you do questionnaire survey? Because not is not in our attention to investigate those situation in a quantification because we want to actually, you know, deep uh, uh, dive. How does the respondent feel? What have they facing? The challenge, the experience. So that is something that you cannot quantify. Only we quantify the result. That is totally different. But if people or panel do not understand, the moment they say the number, they might say, oh, why not you do quantitative? So this is I already um, faced it few times, several times. Uh, so that is why um, it is better just to look at the, maybe you highlight it as high percentage or, but in qualitative, it's called as dominant uh, pattern that emerge. Yeah. So, but actually we count in order to look at the high percentage. Although I say uh, whatever more than five, for example, 10%, whatever more than half, whatever more than five is uh, considered as dominant, um, uh, you will um, encounter that there are information that emerge that you think it is important, but it's not that more than 50% people say about it. So maybe out of 10, there are some information that only 3 over 10, 4 over 10 people um, uh, give the information or agree with something. So whatever not dominant but you think it is important for you to discuss like three over ten four over ten you can also have it inside your finding and report it report it as part of your result um, you can consider it's like um, high finding i'm sorry high major high minor yeah, high finding low finding uh, major or minor so it's still dominant but the one the other one is major Dominant, the other one is minor dominant. But 1 over 10, 2 over 10, that is um, not a strong result. So you should exclude it in reporting or concluding your finding. Okay. I don't know. Sure, I say finding or result. But because, you know why? Because in qualitative, usually the result or the finding, when we get from the analysis result it's not a final fine output so we can call it as finding but it's not your output so i think at the end of this today today sharing you will understand what i mean so we just focus on this first um so you can have like a uh, dominant totally or dominant uh major minor so whatever the less one or two because it is not conclusive it's like you ask people uh, what is the color of the room for the patient uh, of children patient so what you want it to be in this room so you ask people so everybody give different opinion for example what color do you want what color is reflected a good you know way for the children to be in the world so maybe all of them like answering different type of color red white yellow so it's not conclusive at all so it like out like it, it is the, the, the information is not conclusive so you just want to exclude it uh, from your from your report writing, so that uh, result result reporting. Okay, what else? Uh, relating categories that is um, um, from the information that um, when you have finalized it into a, a different you know few phases. When you look at information, the winnowing process took place, so you might want to co conclude it into 
um, into a teams or into a category. So that is what we call as relating categories. And finally, you put it on display. So when you put in any display how the analysis process is done, also part of the data strat analysis strategies that can consider under the winnowing process. Okay, so, so after the winnowing process has been taken place, the imaging is pattern established. Later, after a few cycles, you can establish it as teams. The closest that I um, uh, can refer to with teams is uh, under Krippendorf, he said uh, you can accomplish few uh, distinction. One of it is thematic. He has like synthetic distinction, thematic distinction, categorical distinction, uh, physical distinction, if I'm not mistaken, right? five distinction. But uh, the one that related or aligned with us is not aligned. That you can use is like thematic and category. Syntactic, usually the the language if you study language you use synthetic physical if you study something related to physical item you can also so there is an open off but um for the for today sharing i will um uh, conclude it, the content analysis with the accomplishment of thematic distinction or you can also have categorical distinction okay so that's mean the final one lah. You conclude when you relating cat you relate all the categories under certain category or certain themes. You have already established a thematic distinction. Um, so when you analyze the content, you actually look at the existence frequency, like I say. Uh, actually, um, the high frequency or the high percentage of occurrence is um, uh, represent the dominant concept or themes. Uh, what else? So it can be implicit or explicit. So like I say, it depends on how you your interpretation of the data. If if the data, I mean, it's not the participant um, lying to you about actually he uh, or she is uh, talking about. It's not. He's, he's not actually agree from his word you know that he actually disagree so it is your your role to interpret that so it can be it can be implicit or explicit uh, when we when we like i say when we collect our data we actually referring to our uh, summary of literature which we already summary or concluded under our theoretical framework or conceptual framework as things that we're going to investigate. So when we develop the instrument of data collection, it will be based on that. Same goes with when we're going to analyze, we were also referring to our unit of analysis. If we had all, we're going to refer to the our theoretical or conceptual framework as a foundation, as a basic foundation to analyze when we interpret uh, the information given by participant. But you need to bear in mind um, since uh, qualitative data is an open-ended question, we, we are expecting to, to discover something new that might not that might not being um, properly it's not properly it might not being discussed in the previous literature or in the previous in the developed concept of framework that you have earlier, but um, when we this when we have qualitative data we might discover something new that we can add add in so that will be your contribution usually the the things that we discover through our qualitative data is not that something a new theory usually is an additional or extra or in application to something the more specific it's like extension of knowledge. Usually, we, we that is how the exploratory took place. So, for example, you study about um, sustainable waste management. Most of the, the sustainable waste management in construction, for example. So, lots of literature that you read is from Western, for example. So, when you um, investigate or examine the same situation, the same challenges in Malaysia, you encounter some details from the foundation that you have looked through or find from the literature. So those detailed extension 
and to apply it in the Malaysia context is the extension of the body of knowledge. Okay, so it's not like the new theory that you're going to discover at, at our level of experience and or also PhD candidate, you you will we will not like because this research is not like taking years, okay, like um upper Ebbe and Steiger ta. We we just have a limit time. So usually it's just extension of those whatever you have found have found out from the literature. So how to analyze the content or the interview transcript or any written document. So this is example, so recap from yesterday, this is an example of semi-structured interview question. So if you put it in manual, so this is the transcript look like. Um, an ideal write-up of preparing of interview transcript, it will be like you have the line, you have the question, you put all right, even if people um, break silence or take time to answer in five seconds, you put right. So I take this from David Silverman book. Uh, how, so it is a broken English. So if like I say, if you have in any other language, try at your best translate it into um, broken English. Try your, at your best not to uh, lose the meaning of the people um, delivering the information in Malay or any other language. So from that, um, this is uh, taken from Kep uh, uh, Krippendorf book. So how um, the code base, so you highlight, so it can be the same statement, the same quotation can represent two idea, the overlapping statement also, there is no, no uh, restriction on that. So for example, you have something, oh, this actually represents a, it's also represent B or it can be overlapping. So uh, you can have that. Okay, so it's not, I'm saying it's from the book. I have I have two books that discuss about this coding process. So this is the coding process, the highlighting like you reading the article. So you highlight everything. So it is coding in qualitative. It's called coding process in order to develop a code. So you have code-based approach. Um, so, okay, this is the five distinction that from uh, Krippendorf, it have physical distinction, syntactical is more if you look at language, you have categorical, you have propositional, if you um, might want to look at the potential from the qualitative as uh, looking at the potential variables, maybe, uh, but uh, usually, uh, uh, in uh, social management or in general social sign, uh, we have categorical and thematic distinction if we, uh, that we can establish. So this is an example, if I do it manually, it will be look like this. I have a vast amount of transcript. So the important statement I put in table, so I might have a long Excel sheet or a long table in Microsoft Word, statement one, participant one, participant two, participant three. Maybe if you have more than one organization, then you have this is uh, company A, interview statement one, two, three, four, five, company B, one, two, three, four, five, or maybe this you have like um, your, your, a group of participants, maybe this is the doctors, so this is statement from doctor, the other one is statement from patient or maybe teacher with the students, so it, it will be very messy to undergo the process of we knowing if you, you do it manually, it's going to be so messy and a lot of headache, so I will quickly suggest please get any qualitative software to help you with the analysis process. But it is important to you to know the manual because the content analysis is only the way to make sense of on using the qualitative software because the qualitative software, they don't have it. Oh, this is content analysis like, like quantitative. You have all those formula. You can pick, pick all the, the formulas and um, use it and run it into the software for qualitative is basically how you analyze and managing the text. So without understanding the technique of uh, analysis manually or traditionally, you cannot make sense how the software works. Um, 
if you want to know how it works and or have a brief idea on it, you can go to my YouTube channel. I have give some example on how to use NVivo software to do for literature work and maybe some part of it to do a some some just example on the uh, analysis data. So this is how it looks like. So you put your uh, code uh, interpretation. So this is the coding. You highlight the content. You put it in table. You put it in code. This is your interview question. For example, this is called data display. But inside it's just this data display. Inside this table, as data display, it you actually can discuss all the five strategies that took place. Okay, I already reduced the information. I count frequency, how many participants. Um, I identify the codes. I am relating the codes into a category that is uh, possible. So under social purpose team, for example. So inside this one table, I can actually discuss all the five strategies have to please. All right. <clears throat> So it this how it looks like lah. One, two, three. Okay, uh, some example to give you to 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 brief you through the process of manual analysis. So you look at similarities. You look at differences. Like I say, uh, you need to find for look for a dominant finding. Whatever that less than dominant, but you think it is important, you can also report it as. Uh, high and low or major and minor but whatever that one or two people say about it it might not that strong so you can exclude it out uh, so this is the the the, the circle circle one this the down here is actually um, the output from the NVO this is actually the cognitive mapping so cognitive mapping is like my mapping the differences is my mapping is for brainstorming idea. Cognitive mapping is the final final result that you're going to conclude. You can put it in cognitive mapping. So you can discuss the the relationship or the the sub team, for example. So uh so this is how it looks like uh, in reality if you do it manually, like I say, it's not as easy. As I'm showing you the the this table, it looks like easy. Oh, this is community participation. It might be a bit easy. You might not need to do two or three cycles when you look at the data. If you already become an experienced researcher and do a qualitative data analysis, usually I took like um, two times only. First, I need to identify the initial idea, then I just group it together. Okay, but for researcher who do not have any experience in performing this, they might take longer process of renewing work, like four or five times to really look at the data. So I will like suggest my RA or my student that, okay, look, you don't know what it is yet. You don't know what is the theme or the category that might belong. So just look at the general uh, analysis uh, idea. Look at, okay, just try to find what is the awareness, what is the challenge, what is the obstacle, what is the advantage, what is the strength, what you can also use SWOT just to have the first cycle of the winnowing process. Then on the, as you go along, you can find, finalize the result or the finding. So, or maybe some of you, uh, some of us, um, uh, feel it's a bit easy if you can have uh, some guide. So this is example, this is taken from Robert Eastake, how he actually um, presenting, uh, how he run the analysis process uh, by presenting it in this kind of um, steps. He has few steps. So first, if you have case, this is how you arrange la, your data. You put case A, case B, case C, what have you found? So this is some idea. So which it come from? Okay, how does it merge? Okay, so just to give some idea. And uh, this is example of comparing between manual content analysis and the NVivo software. So if you like, if you like to see more, you can go access my open access journal. 
uh, in the planning measure journal. So this is the link, or you can uh, on type uh, city Uzaria plus aging in place. Also, you the 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 journal paper will pop up, and you can have open access on that. Um, so like like you see, the, it is like uh, this is manual okay i put it example snapshot because inside the journal we cannot show all the process because the paper is only have limited pages but inside our write-up we might need to show every it's not all but if you have like few team few sub teams so you need to show example of each teams so people know and you do have evidence that the analysis process had took place. It's not like just you uh, simplify or just summarize and conclude without any strategies in doing it. So this is my book. You also can have it uh, to look at it in detail to understand uh, more on the qualitative. So the the uh, current, current, current Apple. The latest version of NVivo software is NVivo R1. It's called NVivo Reimagine One. So this is like uh, two years ago the software, but um, there is no not so much different. It's like only ten percent. They just upgrading the interface and put cloud um, tools under the software. So what is the difference between these two? Is one in English, one in Malay. The English one it has show the step the steps of and we will exploration step by step which is also can be used uh, with can be used together with the new version of and the other one the malay one they i don't have the and step by step but i have um, uh, a chapter that give example on how the analysis is done okay i think i can can i just um continue for the um, validity and reliability and the credibility of finding, or you want to have a break? Because I only have two slides, this one and another one. Okay, can we just continue? Any any questions so far be before I continue to the validity and reliability? It's another halfway through <laughs> of the slide. You want to have a break or you want me to continue? Okay, I really don't know whether you are watching this or not. Hello, Linda, can you hear me? Hello? Doctor, hello, hello, Dr. Siti, I have a question. Okay, dear doctor. Uh, I, I would like to ask uh, about your uh, thoughts about using NVivo. Sometimes, like our transcript is not in uh, English and in not in uh, proper English, so I find that the auto um automated coding uh, on NVivo, uh, they tak boleh jalan because um it cannot detect the language. So, in the end, uh, coding on my own. Like if I don't use NVivo, pun tak apa. So is there any other way of using NVivo automated uh, functions? Okay. Have you tried um, uh, the NVivo automated function with uh, Basa Melayu transcript? Have you tried it? Um, because the transcript is verbatim, so my respondents, they speak in uh, Campo campo lah. We have English, we have Malay, so I do not know how to use the automated function with the mixed language transcript. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you for the question. Let me um just clarify on the NVivo tools um with the auto coded function. Auto coded function actually it can work with any any language because. The software run the autocoded based on the frequency of word. It does not matter. It is in English or in Malay. The only thing that uh, should be concerned is um, it much better work the autocoded since it's like computer generated. Um, uh, the the uh, uh, the software 
run the the panggil apa pro, the programmer for the the program for the autocoder is actually looking for the uh, frequency of text okay how does it function for autocoder actually they look for the frequency of text so it can be any uh, language actually but it much better reflect or much better if the language is in english because when they translate or interpret the frequency it can capture it's better capture the meaning in english but it's actually it can work in any other language although you have autocoder you cannot rely your your final result with the autocoder finding you can have autocoder for initial thought of your early result initial finding initial result you cannot have it as the final conclusion one you can have like okay i just want to know what what is the because usually autocoder does not reflect the deep meaning of why you do the um, analysis why why you what kind of information that you seek so that is why it looks like you do manually but it's not it's, it's like you highlighted you find you do the autocoded and in order to get some idea what might uh, the main um, keyword that appear might be uh, the things that you look for inside the look for seeking for inside the transcript but however actually we want the statement so we still need to um, to uh, to filter the information that you get from autocoded and still do it look at the transcript one by one and one by one and coding manually when i say manually it's not like you do it in excel or microsoft Word. you still use the nvivo the first the first round is like free flow idea you put everything and list down the code list and then uh, from that you can play around but uh, it's a hard to to explain lah without showing it. So just to answer about the auto code. So you can have auto code for any other language, but it's better represent in in English, of course. Uh, however, you cannot depend on it or rely on it uh, for your final result. You still need to go your to look into it and filter it. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very point. much. Very clear explanation. Thank you very much. Okay. Hi, um, uh, Dr. Siti. Uh, yeah. here. Um, uh, Felinda just step out for a while. Okay. Uh, tadi Dr. Siti panggil Felinda ke? Oh, tak. Saya nak kata, saya nak sambung balai dating reliability ni. You nak take a break ke? Nak sambung saja. Uh, it is up to you. We can take a five minute break if you want. Ah, uh, okay. Five minute break then. Alright. Okay. Thanks. Assalamualaikum, Dr. Siti. Hello, Waalaikumsalam. Dr. Siti nak mula sekarang ke? Boleh. Okay, terima kasih. Okay, so uh, we continue with the um, how we can um, accomplish the credibility of finding through the reliability and validity and qualitative. Um, as I said um, yesterday about approach, so a different approach, they might have different way on exactly the step and process how they analyze and how actually they can achieve the validity and reliability in under their approach uh, but in general or um, the principles of validity and reliability in qualitative also can be achieved through the things that i will share uh, currently okay so uh in general uh or at least you can you should achieve um you achieve the criteria of validity and liberty uh, from this point of context so like i say yesterday um, although the nature of qualitative is exploratory however if your research is your quality using uh, mainly qualitative data or pure qualitative research work or research approach or you have mixed method with bigger weightage of that of qualitative data so you need to have both element exploratory and explanatory because in lots of 
qualitative books scholars highlighted the, the importance of explanatory so i will also take explanatory as the crucial criteria for validity if i'm not mistaken it's for validity okay we'll look into it later um uh, so a good practice is as soon as you uh, complete your first interview interview you should look into your data to ensure that uh, the information that you expected to get out there okay uh, so maybe after two or three time two or three interview you try um, look at it to like uh, briefly uh, initial analyze the data so you will get some idea either the expected answer or the expected solution or whatever that you expected from your data collection, you'll get it. If you're not, you might want to change the way the question, you need to flexibly, flexibly you, you need to have some flexibility to change your answer question because you still did not get the answer that you want. So you need to expect it there. So there is a good practice. As soon as you can have few early information on your data for transcript after two or three times you quickly look at the information whether you can get the expected answer or whatever solution that you try to seek from the data that you have collected otherwise it might be too late if you run everything and sometimes because sometimes it do happen sometimes you think um Sometimes you mistakenly ask about, okay, what is your opinion on the costs and services give on the services and the, what, um, uh, services and the after service, service during the, the, during the treatment and after treatment. So maybe you shouldn't put it under one question, but you mistakenly or it's not appropriate under one question so maybe you did not get the answer during and after so from that you can flexibly change into two separate questions so you need to look at the answer to get to have some idea uh, either you um, get the things that you want to you expected okay uh so uh, in qualitative it's a bit different with quantitative because our validity uh, our validity of truth is not based on the calculation or the value so it is we at our best represent the things that we investigate we not make things up we represent from the information that we have collected we in alignment with the theory that we have seen earlier with the literature that we have read we understand and interpret interpreted it as it is in alignment to the literature. If you find new information that might not have in the literature, you might want to add a new literature, not to not to like um, not to discuss in detail. It's not like to to investigate the new literature. It's just to um to how to apply the new information you understand it is like this uh. how can i use can i use whiteboard with this microsoft team because i'm usually use zoom i we have whiteboard so i can show something or draw something linda can i have whiteboard with this microsoft okay. team? Uh, how how okay. Tapi bila saya buka whiteboard, uh, slide won't be appear lah. But then nice. Okay. Okay, so just like, I just give example. So let's say this is my study, okay. My study is about um, um, try to find a new to produce a new car, okay, new car production, future car production. So my study is about future car production. Okay, so this is my study. 
um, just showing you to get to give you the whole picture, the holistic view. So this is uh, when we do our study, we need to refer to the process of acquire knowledge from literature. So this is deductive process. So it is from literature review. That means it is um, previous study. So this is my study. Okay, this is my study. Okay, this is previous study. This is my study. So in order for me to understand how what I need in order for me to produce a car, and uh, I need to understand what are the elements to produce a car and for me to investigate what are the need of future car. So in order for me to understand what is to produce a car, how to produce a car, I read literature. So literature said in order to make a car, you need to have engine, body, tire, sport rim. This is just example. Okay. So this is from literature. So of course it has sub sub uh, sub sub component lah. Since my uh, problem statement say um, the highest car on the road, the highest percentage car on the road in Malaysia on the two types, it is MPV and sedan car according to JPJ record. So I will only focus the scope of study to engine of the MPV car and sedan car, body of MPV car and sedan car in my literature. So when I, so I also cover broad, like I, I will explain about the engine, blah, blah, blah. But uh, since the focus of the study related to the problem is the done and PV car. So the engine that I will focus is this, this, this. So I scoop down. So the thing that the element that I already scoop down will become my basis for developing my theoretical framework or conceptual framework. So this is my, my guide for me to develop my instrument for my data collection and data analysis. So cut short. Whatever instrument that I develop for my data collection, I, I will ask people who only drove MPV. It's not like um, MPV Yamaha, so maybe it's MPV between uh, 100,000 and below, uh, not the well fire, ke, the alpha, ke, not that one. Lah. So you, I may, must make sure my scope. So therefore, when an ice person, when I ask my participant or respondent, either I do quantitative or questionnaire survey, I ask the participant, cut short, I got the answer. So I got the answer, finalized, the result is engine, body, wing, lithium battery. So engine and body is something that I have found earlier from the literature, which is deductive acquiring uh, the process of knowledge is acquiring through deductive process this only okay since qualitative is open-ended so i will have opportunity to discover something new so wing and lithium battery something that i discover from the participant so okay kalau kau nak buat kereta future ni kena ada wing sekarang ni dah tak boleh dah kat tajaran raya fuel is expensive so you need to have lithium battery is uh, substitute of whatever battery that you have. So this is all I get there through my um, data collection. So this is called inductive. You induce the knowledge from the phenomena that you investigated. So when I say, okay, this is something that you not discover from your early literature review. So this process called exploratory, explore. Okay. When you want, when I want to table out my finding. Okay, look, this is new car criteria in order for future car production. It has engine, body, wing, and lithium battery. I need to explain. I need to explain. This is exploration from the data that I've collected. I need to explain how this future car work. So I have my finding here. Look, this is criteria of new, new car. Future car, future car. Okay, this is the criteria. I need to explain how does it work. Okay. So this is where the element of explanatory comes in. Explain. Okay. So when I explain, okay, so you look, new car have wing, have lithium battery. I need to explain and discuss, is explain what is wing? How does it work with wing? Wing is not something new. It's new in car, but it's have it's not new in other body of knowledge. Conto, uh, example, uh, aeronautic. It has this body of knowledge from aeronautic, lithium battery from engineering. So I incorporated all this to explain. So those literature come in order to explain how it works. Okay, it's not that like putting new literature 
in order to uh, apa, study it. No, it's just to explain how it works because it's not totally a new finding. It's totally in car, but it do have in other body of knowledge. Okay, so it is this only possible if you have qualitative data. If you have quantitative, you might want, you might not discover this because it is close-ended. If quantitative, you might have this accept, 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 reject, that's all. That will be your finding. I hope you understand what I mean by having new, discover new thing and having new literature to add on on the explanation. That is my intention to show you the, the, the figure, the drawing figure. So anyway, this also in my book. So I think any, any question on the figure, on the drawing part? Otherwise, I will go to the quickly okay <laughs> i'm sorry i'm like a teacher you know we all friends we all doctors okay i'm just sharing my knowledge with you okay linda we go back to our uh, slide all right all right Okay. Yeah, thank you, Linda. Okay. 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 So that so so um uh we represent the best represent the, the situation. Okay, it's not um a, a rigid truth. Okay, it's not a rigid truth, but uh we are confident with the literature that we have, with the theoretical transparency that we have, with our theoretical framework and conceptual framework, with a proper exploratory exploratory process that we show with a proper explanation we show we show we we confident this is we represent the truth of the situation so there is the validity in quality um, and reliability is uh, related to um, whether other people can replicate your work so it's it's deal with uh, replicability deals with uh, either clear or transparent or procedures or SOP or steps. Uh, so this is uh, deals with, uh, it deals with replicability. So I am uh, in agreement with uh, Moisander Walterman. At least you need to have these two to make sure that you already, you to ensure or you can defend that you already achieve reliability by showing that you do have transparency in your procedures of how you select a sampling, how you do the data collection, how you do the logging, how you do the memoing, how you do it's very clear and transparent and you do clear steps. Like I show you if you have like mixed method, sequential or non-sequential, you show the process It's very transparent and it's well explained. So you have transparency of procedures. So you achieve reliability. You can prove that you have achieved reliability because people can easily replicate what you do. Uh, okay. It doesn't mean that they replicate, they will get the same things. Okay. But um, they might have some part the same. Uh, and then the another part is um, theoretical transparency. So if you can show your theory was in place, the unit of analysis is there and aligned with your theoretical framework or concentral framework, and you can show and prove that your data is also aligned with the foundation of theory. Okay. I forget to say, the one, the figure that I show you, you cannot have like all new thing down. Even your qualitative, the foundation of the, the foundation of the study, usually it remains the same. Like in order to have car, you must have engine. That is the foundation. Usually it not more than 50% new thing that you discover or the foundation is the same. Okay. Uh, only the extension or the accessory are new thing. Only the implementation is a bit different. The new thing that you discover. But if you're a professor, you are doing research so many years on something, you might have all news because our base is theory building, building a theory. But in our level, usually we'll, the foundation is to stay the same or not more than 50% uh, new thing that you discover. If your student, for example, PhD candidate have all new, that is somehow they wrongly find they, they wrongly uh, refer to the wrong literature okay so it shouldn't happen in the first place so that is about uh, reliability transparency of theory transparency of procedures okay um there are some other researcher but i'm not using this but there i found it late 
it's not lately lah. There are other researcher in education. I would say that most of it, uh, majority that I read is from education. They use calculation in order to test the reliability. So it's called um, Cohen Kappa. Eh? They, they, they interview uh, some expert and they put some value, okay. Uh, so you can see lah how, okay. Uh, they put some expert, they ask a question, are you agree on this result? So it's, it's kind of relate reliability and validity. So uh, they, if the uh, value is more than five, five I think it is okay, like it's acceptable. Okay, so you can have those. I sh I give you the slide. You can search for this uh paper lah. You to 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 read more on that. Okay, uh, so this is some example. I never use this. Okay, I never use this, but I I can see that some other researcher in in education because they only like interview three panel. It's not 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 so many panels. Just look. This is my result. So ask panel to look at it, and they are asked calculation to 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 like to support uh, to 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 make it to to support to say it is valid it's reliable because all panels all the expert panel agree and it's shown by the number uh, so there is common kappa uh, kind of reliability ways okay because it depends uh, it depends okay but like this, I say uh, this is from uh, Mosendo Bartender. And later I'll show some example as well. Uh, so this is in other example. You see, it is in education. So it might not. Uh, in in my 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 uh, area of study also, we did not use Kohen Kappa. Uh, okay. But I think it is, it's not a wrong way. Like if you still, if you're not in education, but you, you want to, I think it is acceptable as well. Uh, okay, if you look at the silver man, if you we look at silver man, okay, silver man have new book lah. This one I have the book is for two thousand seven. Silver man said, uh, majority authors in qualitative said uh, validity just now about reliability. Now we discuss about validity. Validity in qualitative research can be achieved through triangulation if you have many, uh, the uh, 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 multiple or, or mix. If you have more than one methods or more than one techniques, and you can prove the conversion of validity from the result is converged to get the final result or the final finding. So it's you have achieved. That means you use you you uh, apply triangulation. Therefore, it's you have achieved validity, and also you have respondent validation according to Silverman book. Uh, on, on the 2007 version, page 2290 and 291, said most of the suggested these two. But Silverman said it's, it is much better if you have more analytic approach, like this one, uh, analytic induction, con, constant cooperative method, like very critically analyzed. Uh, if you want to know more, you need to read the Silverman. Uh, the variant case analysis, comprehensive data treatment using tabulation, that will be much better. So I'm agree with Silverman. You shouldn't have this, but to me, having this two is weak. Lah. It's not strong. You can have it, but it's weak. To me, it is better if you have this. This is according to me, and I read, write it in, wrote it in my book. You have triangulation, but you need to prove through convergent validity, as is as is discussed in the Krippendorf book. You need to be able to explain because in so many books of qualitative, you must have element of explanatory. Like I say, if you have major weightage of qualitative or purely qualitative research, and you should be showing that um, uh, it can be also replicate, which uh, which relate with reliability, and also you can add the respondent validation. But to me, uh, triangulation, explanation, respondent validation, and to prove the replication is much more better than only triangulation or respondent validation, just two of that, okay? Um, okay, so what is the relationship? Maybe uh, I, I think all of you already understand that, but I just quickly run through this. What is, it, what is connection between reliability and validity? As you can see, um, reliable, okay, the, the upper number, the center of the this, um, board 
So the the uh, silver part ni, uh, silver part, the grey part ni, the center is the valid area. So if you run one time, you collect data, it's fall under the grey part. That means it's valid and reliable. But usually we do not have one result, right? One data, we collect so many data, like five for participant, for a company, five school. So if you have it, have the result close together. So that means it's reliable because it's close together. Although it's not, that is ridiculous. Not, it is impossible to have um, so many data fall into uh, exact point. Usually we have it close together. So if we have it close together under the context, under the scope, uh, tak adalah semua benda baru kan. Is it under the scope? So it is reliable and it's valid. But if it's scattered away, it's not reliable at all. Uh, tak reliable. This is scattered, dah lah, scattered out of context, out of scope. Uh, so that is the connection between reliability and and validity. And uh, just to give uh, an easy understanding, it's like you buying this, um, I, I'm a person and I want to scale my weight, uh, kan, my weight. So I buy this um, uh, digital weight scale. So it's new, it's not broken, so I use that weight scale. So the, the weight scale is reliable because it's new and it's digital. So it will be very accurate. So I use that weight scale, the digital weight scale, to, to weight my scale. Lah. So I put, uh, okay, 45, I wish, 45 kg. <laughs> 45 kg. So the machine is reliable and I'm using it, it's valid because I'm human. However, the machine is reliable because it's new and I want to bake a cake. So I use the cake ingredient and I measure using the human weight scale. So it's not valid, although the machine is reliable. So that is just uh, some simple uh, understanding on that. So we have a uh, uh, much more validation from the Crippen dog. Okay, as you can see, convergent validities, um, structural. So all this can so also. But the one that I I I list down earlier is at least that is least you can have for your validity. This is from Silverman. He said, uh, if you can use analytical diagram to show the process of analysis, how you come out or derive with that is also part of the validity according to Silverman. So can we generalize if we only uh, have one company or one case study, one hospital, can we generalize? Definitely you can generalize. Like I say, usually the foundation of the body of knowledge, when we refer literature, the foundation of the things that we discover is the same. So that is the thing that we can generalize. Okay, Although only one company or one case study you're using. So how uh, other way to 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 challenge our finding, to make it more valid and reliable, is we always challenge our early finding. Do not get so comfortable or complacent when you get your your results. So try to challenge, is this um, good enough? How can we implement? How it can be implemented? How people, is it, it can be a specific ways of doing it? So always challenge your, your results. Uh, okay, so this is example from Silverman, uh, data display, tabulation. So there is a lot of tabulation data display. Uh, so this is the sources for this uh, slides. Okay, I think that's all for this slide. Uh, is there any question? I think we can quickly uh, continue with the final slide, Linda. So before that, is there any question from the uh, viewers? Linda boleh buka next slide kot sebab tak payah break lah, baru je 10.30, 10.30 kan. Okay. Okay. Thank you Dr. Susana, thank you Dr. Lim. Your involvement make me alive. Okay. <laughs> okay, next slide uh, uh, Linda. Dr. Siti, can I? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I try to formulate your question so I share. Um, let's say I have the, the questions like after carrying out the research, just now you give one example about reliability and, and uh, validity. So, yeah. so I, I was thinking, is there any way like how can I check 
whether uh, the, the thing that I carry out is valid and, and reliable. Is, is there any rules or something, some way to check it? I, I think I already showed you just now in the slide. For reliability, you need to, you need to discuss about having theoretical transparency and theoretical uh, transparency and uh, procedural transparency. So mm. you discuss about this. That means um, you have showing that um, the, 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 the SOP, the protocol is there or the procedures is there and it's very mm -hmm. clear. According to the author, you already achieved the reliability in research. So you oh, can okay. put that in writing. Uh, something like the uh, S SOP to, to show show yeah. how, how you do it. Yeah. I see, I see. Okay, okay. About, the, okay. About the validity, yang tu lah, triangulation whatsoever, or you want to do chromba alpha, chromba alpha tu usually, yeah. like chromba alpha pula, <laughs> point alpha tu, usually uh -huh. people, they like this, okay, this is my uh, framework, this is my model, okay, so go find an expert to, to, valid, to validate that finding. Mm. So you can have expert validation, by putting in writing, or you can have the kohon kappa as well. I see. I see. So, because uh, Dr. Siti, ini benda yang agak baru untuk I, because I think a lot of the terms social science, I think maybe very, very familiar. So, I, I try to digest the, the thing. So, uh, slowly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dr. Siti. Okay, well. Uh, just maybe uh, if you want to buy my book, you can WhatsApp to my team. The number is 010-8864-769. Let me just put the number first before I forget. 010-8864-769. My team will um, uh, uh, advise on the books or any other training that I have. Okay, so we'll, this is the final part um, of uh, today's session. Uh, data analysis structure and findings. So I will show some example on how you can uh, present your uh, write up on the analysis and the finding and the structure for table of content from my experience, um, which is also apa uh, nama waktu kita punya topic evaluate analysis in paper. This is also how they see uh, usually people see if it's very you know um i think the idea is when people read they do not confuse they think oh okay i can see i can understand it's properly structured usually it's okay uh, usually people will accept the whatever write up lah so that is through my experience lah when i no matter how how how, how you need to find because to to you know um for example, if I have four case study, four different four different case study is different group. Uh, case one, case two is another one group. Case two, three, and four another one group fall under a different group. So what will be? I need to crack my head. It's not crack my head now. It's just I need to think what is the best to put it in very structured way so people will capture the information from these two cases with different type of categories. So put it in one group, second group, and then compare it. Uh, so just take time to better structure your write up. That's all. Okay, so uh, we have so recap on your data collection plan. So this will reflect inside your uh, your chapter methodology and your analysis and finding chapter is all connected. So whatever you plan, you have plan inside your research methodology chapter should reflect in under your analysis chapter. So like I say, uh, recap from yesterday, so you might want to look back which part you start. Is it uh, quantity, quality, concurrent, or you start with quantity first, or quantity, and then from the quantity data information, then only you can create question for qualitative part. So it is called nested or abandoned design, so depend which one. So you must really understand your design of data collection plan. Um, so example, I give two example. Uh, this is my from my own uh, research grant. 
uh, in methodology chapter. So this is like comparing methodology chapter and analysis chapter. So I have like data um, case study, data collection technique and I put um, data analysis technique. And inside analysis and finding, I said um, case study discussion category A, uh, case one, case two. Uh, the background information, the document review, the content analysis for the semi-structured interview, case study B, background information, content analysis. Then I have interview data analysis. This one is actually for focus group discussion. So I can put it here, selected stakeholder. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, it's not. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. This is for focus group discussion. So I, I put it selected stakeholder. So what is important is you structure it properly so people can understand. So uh, usually under research grant, uh, we put the analysis and finding under one chapter. But for my PhD student or research uh, PhD candidate, usually uh, I will advise to put it in different chapter because uh, for PhD student, usually we want to look more on the process of the analysis. When the research, when it comes to the research grant panel, don't do not have more intention or interest to look at details way of the analysis. What they concern is, oh, what is the result? What is the finding? Okay, so that is why I'm combining analysis and finding in one chapter. Otherwise, if my student or PhD candidate, I will advise or my RA to advise to put it in different chapter. Analysis and result, one chapter. Finding and discussion, another chapter. Okay, if research grant, I put it in the one chapter. Uh, and then uh, another example, uh, research methodology, uh, research design, um, choosing multiple cases, uh, what is the protocol, how I select my case study, I put it case study screening and selection since I need to justify why I choose that particular cases. Uh, and I put data collection technique, data analysis technique, and inside the analysis, you can see it's a bit different from the previous. The previous I put because I have so many, I have four case study which belong to different type of category, so I structured it like this. While on the other hand, I simply, uh, I only have uh, one local government and few, I have two stakeholder, one is local government and the other one is a community group. So I, I, I said I do cross-sectional analysis between two groups. So I cross-sectional, I concurrently analyze both group and I put it under teams, team one, team two, team three. Team one is housing related area. I do content analysis, team two facilities, team three social related area and a summary and finally I look at the document related to my study, I look at the policy dialogue, I look at the national policy on aging uh, as part of the document review and I uh, converge all the information as my finding and I propose the guideline. So this is raw finding, it's initial finding which I later transform into the guideline, the guideline become my output. So some people call it findings or we might also call it output. So it's we, if we compare with my previous, my finding is the model. The finding is the model. So the to me, um, the, the finding from the analysis itself, it is initial, which you not transform it into the output yet or the final finding as this the tangible thing that you can see. So the tangible thing is the reactivation model. So how I transform the information that I get from the analysis that's done and develop my model or establish my model. And then this one, how I transform it into the proposed guideline framework. So uh, for this, you can, uh, you can look, uh, take a look at the Journal paper, I showed the link on the slide just now uh, about um, aging in place. Okay, so you can see how the process of analysis is done and how I present the finding of the guideline framework. Um, Dr. Dr. Yes. Can you just again? Okay, tadi dia, dia orang nampak apa? Do you see the chapter that I do 
Uh, anything yeah, else yeah. now? Okay. Sebab so, I gerak yeah. kan, so macam I perasan Dr. Siti klik but then slide tak bergerak. Can you just try klik again ke depan? Boleh. Tak ada. Gerak tak? Tak bergerak. Tak ada dekat saya punya screen ni. Sekarang dekat screen chapter 4, research methodology dengan chapter 5. Ha, saya dah Sekarang saya, saya dah gerak. Oh, Dr. Siti dah gerakkan ni. Eh? Sekarang analisis must show the process of analysis. <laughs> Ada tak? Slide 5 sekarang ni. Boleh? How about the rest? Do, do you see slide 5? Uh, I see slide now is analysis must show the process of yes. analysis data. Yes, that's the Okay. So analysis must show the process of analysis lah if you do the analysis chapter. Uh, so jotting down notes, for example, inside analysis. Okay, sorry. Jotting down note, memoing transcript ni raw data, you need to put it under, included under appendix. Do not put inside your main section of write up lah. This one, uh, few example only ya. Eh. For example, you have like 30 interview transcript, choose best two or three and put it under appendix. If you have observation jotting down, uh, put it under uh, appendix as well. So uh, you should not summarize it directly because if I see student, if I evaluate student like, uh, where is the process? I cannot see the process of analysis. You simply summarize and conclude, I will give major correction to the student now. Uh, okay, so I must, I need to look at the process, how you derive into the finding, not only summarize and conclude. Qualitative is not as easy as summary psychology. It shouldn't be. Otherwise, that's why people tengok kita sebelah mata. Uh, okay, it should not be summarized directly. So, uh, the analysis process must be presented, shown. This is exploratory phase. The write-up can be descriptive or narrative. Depend of, depends on the area of study or depends on the approach that you have. Like example, yesterday we discussed, I share about uh, phenomenology, usually in bracketing the experience, the way that you write your report writing, you put it in narrative way. So it depends. It can be either descriptive or narrative. Okay, but not all people should do narrative. Other than phenomenology, I think it will be descriptive. Okay, descriptive that means explanation on what the process that you have undertaken that or you show inside your chapter. Carefully structured your analysis chapter, strategize so reader can understand the flow. So this is what it, you should have under your write-up document, okay, reported document. Uh, so this is manual showing, I need, okay, manual is very, you know, messy and although you use software, you must have a snapshot on each whatever lah, team ke sub team that you analyze, you do, you show the snapshot. So people, oh, this is actually what the participants say. Yes, this is, sometimes they have it inside the writing, they put the quotation, the quotation of the statement also can, uh, or you can also have snapshot like this. Okay, like tangible factors, what are, uh, you can see it is in Malay, yeah? uh, So developing code to development. So this is code. Uh, sub codes or sub team. So this is code. The code becomes sub teams, which contribute to the main teams under the intangible factors. This process is called coding. Uh, under qualitative, this called code coding. Okay. So this is snapshot. Show the analysis process, the manual. And if you lose, if you use software, you need to show lah. So this is example of cognitive mapping. If you use software, you need to show the snapshot as a proof because software simplifies the process, okay? So, it is the same actually, see? Intangible, extra length, it actually appear under the software, the code list, only it's not showing the content. But when you use software, the software can, automated, can, uh, can automatically uh, produce the table like this. When you do analyze using the software, you do the, you know, coding, highlight and put it under the list. You can ask the software, please, I want to see it in table like this. The software can do that for you easily. 
and, and transform uh, and put it into Excel worksheet. Uh, so this is uh, I use software, so I put a snapshot as proof. Uh, so this is NVivo 12 uh, interface. This is NVivo and we will R1, reimagine one. It's like version 13, la, the interface. So you see table showing part of the analysis, participant one, participant two, partic it is the same actually, like, like this one. But this one I put as case, case A, case B, case C. So this one I put participant one, participant two. So this is the, the, the code. Uh, which uh, later group together to establish a team construction stage. So this, uh, if you do it using qualitative software, you can also, I don't know any other qualitative software. Lah. Uh, I, I, in Malaysia, we popular using either Envivo or Atlas T. Both are the same. Nothing is much better than the other one. It's like choosing uh, your iPhone and Samsung. Uh, it is the same, it's like smartphone, it is qualitative software, it is the same, but I don't know whether, uh, whether Atlas T can produce the uh, form table like this, I'm not sure, but Atlas T can do this code list, uh, but NVivo can actually produce this table right away, automated. Uh, and also, what is your research output? How can you translate the initial finding, okay? How you transform your result into something tangible output like uh, the model, the framework, the flow chart, the guideline, which you derive from the analysis result. Lah. So you, you transform it or translate into initial find, how you can translate the initial finding from the data you analyze, so it become finding or it's become output. Finding needs to be explained. The one that I show you just now, example about the future car production explanatory phase what is uh, what is the outcome sometimes people say outcome is output but but to me output is the finding outcome is the benefit of the output what are the benefits who are the beneficiaries so you need to specifically clearly explain this explain and discuss what are the benefits do not put something generally oh this is to the government which government uh, which education, education school, uh, um, daily school uh, for student second stage, which involve uh, form four, form five, and form six, for example, standard four, standard five, standard six, for example. So be as specific as you can be. Uh, be specific about the benefit. Be specific about the beneficiaries as well. So the outcome for the output should be clear. Usually in research grant, this is what they want to look at when they evaluate it, you have accomplished your, your grant have been completed or not. So this is an example of the, the things that, uh, uh, how I transform the result into the guideline framework. It's actually from the result, it's, it's here. Uh, so intangible factors, healthcare service, uh, where is it now? Okay, this is team one, housing, team two, facilities. So I transform it into a guided a guided framework. But of course, this framework have explanation to it. Lah. So I have team one, housing here, team two, facilities and service, team two, social, what is the component and also explanation on how these things can be uh, referred and applied in different stakeholder contexts. Okay, I think that's all from me. Finish already <laughs> our uh, workshop, mini workshop since yesterday until today. Any question on the on the slide or on my sharing? Yes, in slide five. Okay, what <laughs> what is in the slide five? You want me to? Okay, what? Well, was in slide five. Oh, ke tadi, Dr. Susanna, nampak slide five. Okay, any question? For this uh, whole workshop from yes, since yesterday until today, is there any question that you want to raise up or ask?
basically we already completed all the modules. Any question? Saya cek dekat chat pun takde. Takde question ke? Semua senyap je. <laughs> I hope you you get um, understanding lah or, or, although uh, you might may, may this might be your first experience in handling qualitative data but uh, like I say it started on how you view your your phenomena that you study, how you see things, how you view things that get you involved either to sh to 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 have quantitative or qualitative data as your data to solve your problem. So from that you might have a different approach and then focus on the technique of data collection, technique of data analysis and then make sure all is very transparent, the protocol and the SOP and like I say some approaches have to uh, specific protocol to follow like uh, yesterday action research have their design case study have their design you know? so all these show protocols SOP on how to do research for different approach so you if you decide to have or deploy a particular approach so you need to follow their protocol otherwise you are out of the context or out of the content okay ah uh, yeah Dr. Siti mm -hmm. yep. uh. So, uh, untuk research yang ada uh, qualitative and quantitative method, mm -hmm. then uh, number of particip uh, respondents untuk quantitative and qualitative kena kena balance ke sama ke ataupun maybe uh, is is not necessary that quantitative must let's say ten respondent, qualitative must have ten respondent also. It, it doesn't it, work. It doesn't work. Thank you for the question, but it doesn't work that way. For quantitative, you need to have the formulation of qualitative quantitative sampling because quantitative sampling, the basis is the sample that you pick or select should represent the population. So there are the calculation. For example, if you refer to Craig Morgan for 4,000 population, how many sample? So the number of selecting sampling for quantitative and qualitative is totally different. So it is uh, not necessarily to have the same number. The, the more, most important thing you need to follow the the upper the way how to select sample for quantitative, the way to select sample for qualitative. The number will, will be a different number. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because qualitative, qualitative is based on the criteria. Quantitative based on the population calculation. Qualitative based on criteria. Oh, okay. So, um, biasanya qualitative you like interview, kan? No, uh, can be anything. Can be observation, can be interview, oh, can be first group discussion. I see. Interview pun boleh jadi quantitative ke? Interview tak boleh jadi kuantitatif. I see, I see. Okay. Uh, but dia kalau interview yang sometimes people say, I doctor, I do structured interview. What do you mean? Uh, I ask the pakci. Uh, okay, pakci, uh, how many time you take medicine? Five. If interview <laughs> become checklist, so that is very structured. So it is kuantitatif. But usually nature of interview is kuali lah. I see, I see. Okay, okay. I I think yeah. Thank you, Dr. Siti, for, for uh, clarifying that. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Also, welcome. Um, okay, if you do not have any question, okay, um, I think if you have... Um, okay, uh, if you want to have more sharing on me, you can go to my YouTube or, or I sometimes go uh, live sharing at my Facebook page as well. Uh, and... Uh, some IG as well. So uh, I think that's all. Lah. Thank you very much for your attention and for the question, for involvement, for your participation for, for these two days. I really appreciate it. Uh, also, thank you for you time later to uh, invite me to have you part of the team to share my knowledge and experience that uh, a bit on that that I know. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. See you again. Thank you, Dr. Siti.
Um, bagi pihak ADEC, saya nak ucapkan terima kasih sebab sudi meluangkan masa for these two days for a very um, pack and really well um, webinar untuk pemegang grant UM Lighter. So hopefully sedikit sebanyak, I think is is it is very um, helpful um, dapat membantu our lecturer, our PI and our research members to where to go from here um, in your uh, UM Lighter research. So probably maybe um, kita boleh jumpa Dr. Siti lagi for a hands on probably. <laughs> InsyaAllah. Hands on kuat dekat uh, NVivo eh. <laughs> mm, hands on NVivo pula. Okay. Uh, yang, tu, yang tu much better kalau kena dekat lab lah because kalau mm. online ni is a bit hard because you nanti buat sama ada you tengok atau you need to have to monitor. Mm. Monitor to do it and to tengok. Uh, unless uh, it's better to do at the lab lah. Face to face. If 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 it's allow and under uh, the situation apa membenarkan insyaallah lah kita boleh fikirkan idea adakan uh, the physical training on in vivo as okay. we am later so oh, thank right. you so much dr siti and thank you everyone for staying until the end um slide and recorded session will be available here in the teams so uh, you can rewatch again this um session um, oh, just, uh, just want to add something um, I know I give you slide, but uh, be careful if you want to share the slide with other person because I'm not explaining the slide. They might get it wrongly. So they mm. only be concerned lah because, you know, it take more to explain rather than giving a slide. That's only right. concern. Okay. okay, thank All you. Right. Okay. Thank, thank you, everyone. Um, okay. I will give you the link to our feedback form. Don't forget to fill them in if you need more. Um, webinar like this, please tell us. We will do our best to help you. All right. Okay, everyone. See you. Okay, bye bye. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Assalamualaikum.